because they know without you in the book, you will never find yourself. They wanted you to believe that your history was not true. Right. So what they, what they did, they've accomplished. They lied on the book. They demeaned the book the same way they lied and demeaned the people of the book. Read it again. Jeremiah 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage. The Most High said his people would discontinue from their, their heritage. Every other nation in the earth have a heritage except us. Oh, well, I'm African. Okay, if you're African, there's four families of Africans. North Africans, which is Puat. South Africans with the Canaanites. Ethiopians and Egyptians. I need someone to tell me out of here, in here, which of you come out of any of those four hermetic African families? You don't know which of the one. You didn't come out of none of them. You're not Egyptian. You're not Ethiopian. You're not North African. You're not South African. Your people came over here from West Africa. The people that ran into Africa in 70 AD. And that is recorded in the Bible. That the Jews ran into Africa. Christ talked about that happening. Okay? So if you don't know your heritage, if you don't know who you are, Number one, how can you bring anything to other people when you haven't found yourself? Right. Well, I'm a black man. No, you're not a black man. Somebody told you you were a black man. You were brown man. <laughs> and there's other nations that are brown. Arabs are brown, but they know who they are. Africans are brown. They know who they are. So the book that can give you back your knowledge and your heritage and your rich history, you're denying Read on. And thou, even thy soul, shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. Why did the Most High do this to us? Why did he put his people on the bottom if these people are the chosen people? Why would he take your rich heritage from you? Read. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. I will cause you to do what? To serve thine enemies. I'll, the Lord says he would cause you to serve your enemies. Read. In the land which thou knowest not. This is the land that we didn't know about because this is the new world when that was written. So that was prophecy. Jeremiah prophesied our people coming over here in a land we knew not. Why, read? For ye have kindled a fire in my anger which we, shall burn forever. We made the Most High angry. We started following the other nations. So he took away our heritage. He took away our rich history. I need you to read that part right before that, because there's something key right there. Right before, right before that. Stick with me, brother. That, the last part you read. Right before that last part. For ye have kindled a fire. Before that. I, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Now how can they teach the Bible when it tell you that the Lord will send the children of Israel to a land he knew not, and he would serve his enemy? And so if the enemies were teaching the truth out of the Bible, you, we would have known off the ships we were Israel. Exactly. Mm. They, we would have knew off the ships. So they wasn't teaching this Bible, brother. That's what we're trying to tell you. They was trying to get you out of the Bible the whole time. They was enslaving you, beating you, calling you types of names, doing all things to you with the Bible in front of them so that you could relate the Bible to what they were doing. Mm. So that you can one day say, well, I don't want nothing to do with that if that man did that. It's holding that book. When he wasn't using the book. He was using psychology. Mm. He was using psychology because he knew that the people would one day at the very end wake up and they would, they would equate their slavery with the book they had in front of them. No way an enemy is going to be set up and teach you of yourself. So don't blame the book. The book is working in your favor. Mm. The book is working in your favor, brother. Because one thing about this book, and this, listen, Every prophecy, let me make it clear though, every prophecy that the Most High said would go down is going down. And guess what? We can show you tonight, blow by blow, what's going to happen in this earth. Okay. Hold up. I'm going to show you. It ain't going to take long either. Blow by blow, we can show you what's going to happen in this earth. And none of it came from our own mind. The so-called white man or whoever you want to call them had it in their hands the whole time. And they still can't break down the prophecy because they're not the people. Okay, so don't equate the lies of your enemies with the book. Okay, because the book condemns their actions. Mm. Because if the Mosai said, you cannot steal, thou shalt not kill, 
and you're stealing and killing to get a country, how can you say that you that, that what you're teaching is built on biblical uh, principles? I'm able to decide, separate you from the book from the door. So you can't stand in front of the Bible and, and give me knowledge of Christianity. We ain't, we, listen, we're not dealing with Christianity, but we're dealing with Christ. Because Christ condemns what they did. I'm trying to, I, I, I need to beat this home, and that's why I asked this question, brothers and sisters. They said, if you want to hide something from these people, put it in a book. It was in front of you the whole time, but instead of you reading it for yourself and receiving the inspiration in the spirit, you was dependent on a preacher that was set up to keep you enslaved. He's nothing but a taskmaster that was set up in the churches on Sundays to, to make you feel good in captivity. And they gave him a doctrine. They didn't give him the Bible. The majority of these preachers that preach, they go through one scripture and preach for three hours. They don't go into this Bible, man. This Bible is for you. So I'm going to show you blow by blow, according to prophecy, what's going to happen here. And if you don't believe in anything, know that everything we received came out of this book. And then you will believe this book is true. Then you will believe in Christ because he talked about it 2,000 years ago and it's going to happen in chronological order just like it's happening right now. Go to Isaiah the 13th chapter. Go to Matthew the 24th chapter. I want to interject something right here. It seems as though people always understand what their condition is while they're going through it. But they never seem to understand how to prevent or how to correct the condition that they're in. So I want to try to help you with that just a little bit right here. Because we have a tendency to get angry at the European or the so-called white man because he's smacking you around and he's kicking your ass and he's choking you out in the streets and all these other things and this has been going on for, for decades as long as I can remember okay but right here in Jeremiah chapter 42 verse 18 Jeremiah wrote this for thus says the Lord of hosts the God of Israel as mine anger and fury had been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. See, the inhabitants of Jerusalem are the children of Israel. All right. Anyway, this is what we're trying to express to you, who the children of Israel really are. Because all you have to do is look at the symptoms, and then you can determine what the disease is. Okay, so the symptoms are is that the God of Israel has poured his fury out on his people. And this was done because they chose to go after other nations, be like other nations, and worship their gods. Okay, so let me finish this. It says, So shall my fury be poured forth upon you when you shall enter into Egypt. See, the United States is considered another Egypt. I can show you that in the script. For the purposes of making this thing short and simple, the United States is this other Egypt that the prophet Jeremiah was talking about. Then it continues. And you shall be an excretion and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach and ye shall see this place no more so it's telling Israel once you go into Egypt you're not seeing this place no more you're not seeing Jerusalem no more because you defiled it with your false gods and your false religion and all of this stuff and I've given this to you as I would someone that I love, but you've shown me that you don't love me because you have failed to keep my commandments. And this is still the situation today. So I'm going to end it right here, and I'm going to add something a little later. But I just wanted to point this out is that you want to get mad at the European for doing what they do to you. 
but you was placed in this condition by the God of Israel. I'm talking about the so-called black man, black woman. You was placed in this condition by the God of Israel, which is supposed to be your God. But after your God get done kicking your ass, then maybe you'll figure that out and try to seek his face. That's all I'm going to add right now. We're going to let that go. Yes, brother. Do you believe that this um, book has been tampered with in the years? I believe, let me answer that question. I believe that in order for them to uphold their gods, they have to switch certain words to reverence their gods. But guess what? Switching a word is not going to change the content of a verse. The verse means what it means. But instead of them putting the Most High's name there, the Jewish people, which are the synagogue of Satan, along with the Christian church, took the Most High's name out and injected Satan's name in. Like God. When they know that in the ancient Hebrew it was read from right to left. So that was dull because the Egyptians and the Romans worshipped the jackal. So I understand that they took certain words out. But the verses still mean the same. It's up to us to research our history and get the Hebrew and compare it just to take out the bones. You don't throw out the baby with the bath water. So yes, they did inject certain words, but as intellects, you're going to throw out your whole history because these guys switched a few words? No, nah, you're not going to get us like that. We'll go in and find out what word is there, and then we will continue to teach this, teach this Bible. That's what we have done. Okay? And guess what? They didn't have to tamper with the Bible once they tampered with this. Right. <laughs> because by tampering with this, people aren't even going to the Bible anymore. TV is your Bible. The Daily News is your Bible. The Internet is your Bible. So people don't believe in the most time read this book for inspiration. Some people have it open just for show or a prop or for good luck. Okay? Let me show you something here. What's going to happen? Go to Matthew 24, Isaiah 13. What's going on right now in Bible prophecy? Iran right now. The news is all, everything is magnified around Iran, the president of Iran. I'm a dinner jab. America want the other guy in, but yet this guy was voted in. They're promoting the people rioting and taking over Iran. Why is it? And to you, Matthew the 24th chapter and Isaiah the 13th chapter. Okay, and to you, okay, and to you, to, to us here, I'm, I'm not just saying you, us here, look at that on TV, and because we don't read the Bible, we don't understand how close we are. We don't understand how close we are, brothers and sisters. Don't you know that according to the Bible, it's that country that's going to do America? According, I can read it. According to the Bible, it's that country that's going to wipe this country off the face of the earth. So you're wondering why they're magnifying Iran and everyone's talking about Iran? Because even though they haven't taught you the Bible, they know it. And they know the Bible prophecies are true. So they're trying to switch prophecy and put guys in to try to abort the Bible prophecy. You don't hear anybody talking about uh, Bible, uh, Quran prophecy. Why is the Bible the most publicized and sought after book on the earth? People not trying to look at the Gita and the Book of the Dead and all these other books. This is the most publicized and bought book in the earth. Because why? You don't hear people saying, well, Muhammad prophesied this was going to happen. Why? They, they, you, they know this is the key. We're going to show you blow by blow what's going to happen here. Go to, go to Isaiah 13. Let's read it. Let's start at the 13th chapter in the first verse. And then we go to Matthew 24. And I'm going to say this. Once we bring this out here, I'm going to show you what the Lord said do. We're going to wish you Godspeed once we leave. But everything we drop in here is going to go down. And y'all going to know it was true. Then you're going to believe. It's going to get catastrophic here. It's going to get bad, very bad. Not just here, all over America. We're going to let you know what's going to go down here. Your borders are going to get cut off. Your borders. You're not going to be able to get out.
okay? You're not going to be able to get from city to city. It's about to happen. With this new influenza pandemic, they're about to cut it loose. We're going to show you. Of course, the name of this video series is from Tribulation to the Kingdom of Heaven. And I've got it situated into separate vials. And these vials are representative of the vials that were poured out by the by God's angels when it was time for tribulation. Now, a lot of false prophets run around talking about uh, you got great tribulation, it's three and a half years, so forth and so on. That's, uh, that's not what I've learned. I've learned that tribulation is a seven-year period, and great tribulation is another seven-year period. So you're dealing with two seven-year periods when you get from the beginning of tribulation to the end of great tribulation, okay? So this video series is depicting what's going to transpire on the earth as these particular angels start to pour out their vials upon the earth. Okay, in Revelation 16, chapter, verse 3, it says, and the second angel poured out his vial upon the, upon the sea. And it became as blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. Okay. So now the visual effects of that is this. Startled residents of a Russian city inside the Arctic Circle have been posting photos of a local river that has mysteriously turned blood red. Photos published on Russian social media appear to the show the Dodikan River near the city of Norilsk, flowing vivid burgundy. Russian authorities have yet to establish a reason for the river's unusual appearance. Now the prophets oftentimes refer to the sea as the people or the conglomeration of the people all together. And this encompasses the sea or the waters. So this is just a symbolic way of saying that because of the pouring out of these vials, every living soul is going to die in the waters. Everything that's going to go down here. And when it break out, and when it happens, when they're going to tell you to stay in your house for days at a time, you're going to know who, is it, who, who, who the Lord had in your living room. I hope y'all heard what this brother said. He said when y'all start, when they start having you stay in your houses for days at a time, then you will know who is sitting in your living room. This video series was made, was videotaped back in 2012. 2012 was the beginning of tribulation. Now you have experienced the authorities having you stay in your houses for days at a time. And it's not over. Even though they're loosening up and people are going back into restaurants and so forth and so on, it's going to be another so-called outbreak. And the people will be back on so-called quarantine. So, once you see all these things come to pass, then you will know who was on your video screen. Okay? We, we, we didn't drive here for luxury, for money. Nobody giving us nothing. We here to warn the people before we leave. Once we leave out of this country, this country going down. Hey, sister, we should be scared. Because scaring you will make you do something. Faith without works is dead. Read Isaiah 13 and 1. Start there. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. The Lord says the burden of Babylon. This is what's going to happen to Babylon. They call it Babylon because this place deal with the same ritual.